All right, hello and welcome everyone. Doug here with the LincolnList.com. I want to welcome you back to another weekly edition of Stock Market Mutterings, where I'll do my best to try to find you some tradable setups throughout the week and make sense of this market for you. As I begin each and every one of these, if you guys need help with your trading and you're trying to go to the next level, you want to align yourself with a professional trading community, visit the LincolnList.com, click on the Trade Room tab, and begin to trade with us live. Also, this is for the week of the 29th of May. So we'll start as, as we always do with the market, and I'll try to give you a couple of numbers that you can work on throughout the week. If we start out, we're just talking about what's the breadth of the market. What's the market trying to tell us? Ain't telling us a damn thing because it's just like this. It's like a frozen rope. It's going sideways. Now, where we were talking about last week or where we left off, I thought maybe if we got above this little breakout point, you see right down here at the bottom chart on the daily, we had some 274s that was a, a, an interest because we talked about that would confirm a double top. If you could get through that, then there was this outside chance that we could start talking about 280s because this is going all the way back to the earlier parts of March with resistance. Well, it kind of got up there, but it wasn't really enthusiastic. I know we're entering the summer, but still not really enthusiastic in the market. Just sort of just kind of, you know, kind of went limp there towards the end of the week, just back and forth, a little bit choppy. Now, on the good hand, it hasn't really sold off either. Now, as we all know, this is not going to last forever. It's not going to continue to trade sideways for the rest of our lives. So if you're looking at a bullish case here. And that's the, that's what you want to make out of this market. It's 274s. You start getting above 274s. Then, you know, we possibly could look at 280. We could possibly look at a shorter term rally, you know, back, back up to that level. Now you are sitting around here with, with a very tight consolidation down at 270 and a half. So if these rallies continue to fade and there is no momentum and you start to see breaking down around the 270 and a half area, then maybe you want to start looking at that 50 moving average that's down here a little bit towards the 260s, 260, excuse me, the 265s, 266s, maybe somewhere down in there for a, a slower fade. Now, one thing we are seeing now in this market that I want to point out to everyone is that it feels like buy the dip is back, at least for the short term, because we saw a couple flushes. We had some news event, you know, with the whole North Korea issue. There were some other things that came out there. There were some individual stock names that got hit. But in the end, they all kind of got bat, bought back up. Now, maybe not with the enthusiasm that we had in 2017, but we did see that buy the dip kind of sneak back in there. So let's kind of watch that. Something else I want to point to you outside of just the spy. I want you to take a look at the cues here. This is really, really starting to set up. And if there was a leader this week, we saw some really strong names coming from the, the, the techs. I mean, we saw Netflix with this all-time high breakout, and it just kept piling it on. You've got Amazon sitting at a very critical area right now. You saw a good move out of Apple, and it's holding up most of it. So, so for the most part, the tech names were really, really strong. This thing is just sitting out up here, and I, I tell you, if you just, it's, it's kind of like the market, but it's still showing a little bit more strength. If you get above this 170 area here, you really got to take a look at all of these names, because they're just going to explode, in my opinion, if it can clear that. Now, I'm not saying they're going to explode unless they go above that, but the, the cues here are really, really tightening up. The tech sector has been somewhat of a leader, so pay attention to those. That's just something I'm going to throw in there because if it does go up there, you're probably going to see monster moves on Amazon. you can see monster moves on Facebook, Netflix, NVIDIA, all of those bigger names. Now, let's step into a couple of stocks. I'm going to give you the most undecisive, irritating bad stock for the week. I don't want to say it's a bad stock. That was, that was bad. I shouldn't say that. Let's talk about BABA. I think the whole entire planet knew that BABA going over 200 bucks was a big deal. And I tweeted it several times. And I'm not the only one. It's not like I can see everything that some other person can. I mean, just look at this daily chart down bottom. And this thing has been flirting since the early parts of the month with 200. It got up there four times, four times over the course of this month. And it was unable to do it. It just kept pulling back. It just kept getting heavy rejection. And all of a sudden, it just kind of throws it out. right, to, Just right here on a holiday weekend, on a Friday at lunchtime, of all, uh, of all times to do your breakout. It's right at lunch. Hits the 200. Now, we had to go for this trade. This is one of the things I talk about a lot in the happy hours and whiteboards. There's certain trades you have to take. You can't worry about everything, about time and when it's happening. This 200 was huge. You see what happened when it broke 200. I mean, this thing just totally went vertical, stopped a bunch of people out. And it looked like it was ready to go, you know, hella nuts. And then it fades. And, and, and there it is. It's fading again. The reason that we're talking about this is because 
Let's watch that 200 again. Maybe it needs another opportunity, but now you're a little bit, you're, you're closer to 201 now because it actually made that move. So watch this thing maybe to kind of retest that. The other flip side is that if you're somebody that likes short selling, I mean, every time this thing gets up towards 200, 201, right now, if, if you would have done it all month, you'd have been better off just shorten the damn thing. It just keeps getting rejected, but you got a lot of tight consolidation. And just like the market, you're stuck in this range. It's been going on all month, but at some point, somebody's going to win out. You're either going to go higher or you're going to go lower. But look at Baba here for, you know, for a trade. We'll see what she does. Now, another one, let's stay, let's stay in the China. Let's get our China on here. How about a little bit of Baidu? Baidu. Now, Baidu got hit here with this whole COO. I think it's what it is, COO, CFO. Somebody leaving the company, and boy, did they get, did they get slaughtered. Left a lot of people hanging here. 285 all the way down to 242. So a $40 retracement. It's been going on for the whole week. Now, what you do have here is you have this thing consolidating right down here at the bottom, and it's on its 200 moving average. That's this blue line on my chart down below. So it's just kind of sitting there. It's been holding up 240s. That's pretty good, the, the low 240s. And it's just trying to come up out of the hole here. So keep an eye on this. Again, just like we've been talking about with every single chart we've shown, they're in a very tight range here over the last week. At some point, it will break. If you're a short seller, you want to short, this thing goes under 240, starts to break some of those levels. You got to be looking at short. You got to be looking at filling in that void down to 220. If the market is strong, you start to see Q's rally. You start to see other names rally. You see China names rally. And this thing starts building up over 245 and a half. Then possibly you get yourself an, another upswing in, in this thing that could connect with this 20 moving average. I think that's what I'd prefer to see here is us going above 243s and then working our way to 257. I mean, that'd be a hell of a trade. A trade of the week right there. All right, so let's watch this one. Now, another one that I'm a little bit more biased on. Oh, look, I'm just typing a bunch of stuff in there at the top. Tesla. We talk about Tesla every week. And I mentioned this last week as well that you were at a pivotal par here and it got down there, it sold down into that level. You had a couple of big washout days, but in Tesla fashion, it's, it's clinging. It's like, oh, I'm holding on. This 272 is down here. It's important. I mean, look at that thing. It's just it's sitting down there at the bottom. You've got a spanned out double bottom that's been lasting now for over a month. I mean, watch that thing. If it starts to close underneath of there, you start to see rallies get sold off. You've got to think this thing wants to head to 260 before it goes back to 300. But just like all the rest of these stocks, this is what happens. You look at these consolidated points, and the best thing that you can do as a trader is not develop a bias if you're not already in it. Because it could be just like a Baidu. If it pops above that, I mean, Tesla is a stock that has more than nine lives. I mean, you've seen it come down here in the bottom. You've seen it get sold off. You, you know how, where they stand as far as profits. Most people know the story behind this thing. It fights, it fights off the bottom. So it's not unlikely that you'd see this thing hold this 272 and then fire off an $18 day. So if we're going to go all through next week, I find it hard to believe that there's not going to be a 6 or $7 print you know, in one direction on this thing next week. You just, you just gotta have to look at the chart, see where it is, but you're down here at a very critical level, just like you were last week. It did a good job of holding that, but if this 273 goes, 272s, then you, you definitely have to look at possibly shorting this thing down to 260. And I'm gonna throw this UVV in here, Universal Corp. It's a little bit thin. This might turn out to be something like a swing trade, but look at that. Look at that thing right there. That is one hell of a day. It looks like a penny stock, doesn't it? Just 48 to the 60s here, 65, 66, and just two days. That's it, two days after their earnings. Just a monster move on this one. These can be a little bit tough because they're thin, and you got to kind of pick your spots for it. Like I say in a lot of these videos, you just don't dive into this just because it's up and it has a really steep RSI. There's more to it than that. But watch this thing. Kind of look for a pivot somewhere, some, some level there. you you got to start thinking of possibly shorting this thing. Or if you happen to wake up one day and you get a big old flush out, you get a dip on it, and then maybe, maybe this is something that you want to consider buying. I just want to throw this one out here to take a look. So I'm going to leave it right there. I hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you need help, visit the link on this.com. Click on the Trade Room tab. We'd love to have you as a part of our community and help you with your trading needs. As always, trade well, and until the next mutterings, take care.